Welcome back everyone, and today we're making serotonin. And yes, the same serotonin you immediately think about, the neurotransmitter. Serotonin is most commonly known as the happiness chemical, even though it's not 100% accurate. But serotonin in the brain is responsible for feelings of optimism, happiness, satisfaction, things like that. It's probably most likely referred to as the happiness chemical because it is the main target in things like SSRI antidepressants, which stands for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. This just causes more serotonin to sit in between the synapses in the brain, which just increases the levels of serotonin, therefore making you more happy. Well, in theory, that's what it's supposed to do. Obviously, antidepressants don't have a 100% success rate. Yeah, it's not exactly the happiness chemical, but serotonin regulates a lot of things in the body as a neurotransmitter. And well, the first question you fiends probably have is what happens if you ingest pure serotonin? Like, what's going to happen? Because um, you may know that psychedelics act on serotonin receptors, and uh, you know that's why psychedelics have the effects they do is due to serotonin. Um, but the fact is serotonin does not cross the blood brain barrier. So it doesn't enter the brain at all. Instead, it just enters the gut. And a uh, fun fact, actually around 90% of your serotonin is actually made within the gut and it controls bowel movements and things of the such. So yeah, if you ingest pure serotonin, it will really just make you shit yourself. Yeah, don't try eating serotonin. And in high enough doses, of course, it will just kill you because it is a neurotransmitter and too much of it will start effing things up. Okay, so to make our serotonin, we're going to have to find a molecule that is fairly similar to serotonin because building it from the ground up is a much, much more difficult synthesis than finding a closely related molecule. So in this case, we'll be using 5-HTP, which stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. And this can be found in many over-the-counter supplements, which are marketed towards increasing your serotonin. And if we take a look at our 5-HTP molecule here and take a look at serotonin here, you can see they're very similar. There's only one small difference, and this is this carboxylic acid hanging off the end. Thankfully for us, there's a quick and easy process to remove that carboxylic acid known as decarboxylation. So actually your body produces serotonin from 5-HTP by decarboxylating it. But of course it uses enzymes, which makes everything 10 times easier. You know, just throw an enzyme at it and it, it just freaking works. Anyways, our first order of business is to first extract our 5-HTP from our over-the-counter 5-HTP supplements. So right here's the 5-HTP supplements that I bought. And in total, this contains around 24 grams of 5-HTP. The other ingredients is rice flour and then the capsule is made of cellulose. So all we have to do is really separate the 5-HTP from the rice flour. I first started by painstakingly opening each individual capsule and dumping it into this beaker. Once I emptied all the capsules, I then added a bunch of distilled water to the beaker. This is because 5-HTP should be soluble in the water while the rice flour should not. You'll see later this was an awful idea and I kind of expected it, but I was I was too ignorant and pushed ahead anyways. After mixing the water with our 5-HTP supplements, I went ahead and added it to a hot plate to boil it to help make sure all the 5-HTP dissolved in the water. And this ended up just turning into a massive, goopy mass that is just awful. So the next step was a vacuum filtration, but I kind of already predicted this was going to go terribly wrong. Just the consistency of this mass, it was not going to vacuum filtrate easy at all. But I went ahead and at least gave it an attempt in the first place, and yep, it clogged the vacuum filtration like hell and nothing was coming through. So we're going to have to switch to a plan B. So I went ahead and poured everything back into a large beaker and then I placed it onto a hot plate to boil down. I want to get a nice concentrated solution. This took way longer than I wanted. This was a good three hour process of just boiling down this sh shit looking mixture. It's, ugh. I don't want to think back to it because it was just awful. But once we got the concentrated solution, I went ahead and dumped in a bunch of methanol. This would hopefully cause the rice flour to kind of congeal together and then our 5-HTP will also still be soluble in the methanol water solution, but our rice flour should kind of coagulate out. And hey, for once in my life, it actually freaking worked. Mmm, brewed iced tea. Yum. Eh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a gravity filtration. Hopefully this will work. Good.
This should in no way be legal, but fuck it, it works. Two at one time, baby. That's multitasking right there. That is multitasking. Okay, we have our solution and it is uh, black. So now it's just time to boil it down, let it cool, and hopefully, hopefully our 5 HTP will crystallize out. I can just pray that it does. Um, it should, in theory, it should. But look at this, um, this is what the filter paper left behind. Disgusting feeling, but yeah. Okay, starting to boil down, we're getting pretty low. I'll probably let this go about down to 25 milliliters and hopefully crash out our 5 HTP. Oh boy. Okay, we're down around, you know, 25, uh, yeah, 25, 50 milliliters, somewhere around there. Now I'm gonna let this cool, but, ooh, you see those crystals? Yep, that is our 5 HTP. At least it should be. Ooh, look at those crystals growing right in there right now. Oh yes, that's 5 HTP definitely. Oh, look at those crystals form. Well, after all that pain, there we go. Look at those crystals. Um, they're brown and that's due to some crap in the rice flour. Uh, whatever that is, I'll try to give it a wash with some methanol and see if that gets rid of it. But yeah, look at those, look at all those crystals. Okay, and our crystals actually look pretty good, but we still have an issue. They're poop brown colored, and I kind of want to get rid of that. So I'm going to opt for a recrystallization. So I went ahead and added some 5-HTP into a small amount of distilled water and added it to a hot plate until it fully dissolved. I then went ahead and placed this back into the fridge and waited for it to cool again. Bam, our 5-HTP crystallized out. Now there's another problem. They're still poop brown, but they're sort of white, so I'm going to call it good enough. Um, I don't think recrystallizing this again will get rid of that poop brown color, so uh, we'll just we'll just leave it. Well, uh, kind of had a slight issue. Um, I took the five HTP crystals and set them out to dry <laughs> on my workbench outside. It was nice, hot, and sunny. I was like, oh, these things will dry up nice and quick. Till the wind came along and took that shit and yeeted it across the yard. Um, now there's no more 5-HTP crystals. <sighs> I hate myself. I hate myself. Okay, so after our last little mishap, um, I bought some pure 5-HTP. Yeah, I know it looks like it's been rolling around in fucking mud, um, but long story. Story for another time, you know? And here we'll take out our pure 5-HTP, and yeah, it's white, not shit brown, <laughs> like our extracted HTP. Um, this is what pure 5-HTP looks like. So we'll be using this instead, um, obviously, because Mother Earth now owns our 5-HTP. Okay, now we have to do our decarboxylation of our 5-HTP. And like I said before, we're we'll doing a catalytic decarboxylation. This is because the normal decarboxylation can take many hours to proceed. Normally you put it in a high boiling point solvent, stir it around, heat it, and it can take up to 10 hours. I don't have the patience for that. So instead we're gonna be doing the catalytic decarboxylation using a ketone catalyst. This works for alpha amino acids. This is because the ketone catalyst actually forms an imine with the 5-HTP, and this helps the decarboxylation proceed faster. And then later hydrolysis will relieve our serotonin and then also regenerate our ketone at the same time. So that's why it's a ketone catalyst. So to start off to a hundred milliliter round bottom flask, I went ahead and added about seven grams of our 5-HTP. Then on top of this, I added around 60 milliliters of acetophenone. Now the acetophenone acts as a high boiling point solvent and it also acts as a ketone catalyst in one. According to the literature, well, at least for the decarboxylation of tryptophan, which produces tryptophan, tryptamine, acetophenone has the highest yields and 
overall the best result. Then I just went ahead and turned on the heat and turned on strong stirring and gave this about two hours of heating at roughly about 150 C. Now time to insulate it with some KO wool. This will, you know, just help insulate it, you know, keep heating, keep heating. Yeah, this hot plate isn't really the greatest hot plate you've ever seen. I don't think it's supposed to be making that noise. What did I do to deserve this? Okay, um, that, that should help it. This hot plate doesn't really put out that much heat, so that's necessary. Here it is about 20 minutes in. Again, uh, very uneventful. We are starting to get kind of a reflux and um, some CO2 bubbles coming out there too along with it. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half. You can see it's turned slightly yellow, um, still refluxing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and just wait for it to cool down. Now here comes the hard part and this is purification. I'm going to try to add aqueous hydrochloric acid directly to the solution. Now this will perform the hydrolysis step and form the hydrochloride salt, which will then become soluble in water. And this means that any serotonin that is left in the organic later, the acetophenone, will then be turned to the hydrochloride salt and will hydrolysis to get rid of the imine and pull it down into the water layer. So hesitantly, I went ahead and added about 20 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid to our crude decarboxylation mixture. And it immediately kind of turned a little green, but it also turned black, which tells me there is some side reactions going on that we do not want to happen. From what I've read, at least on Science Madness, aqueous hydrochloric acid can destroy tryptamines. I couldn't find a publication verifying that, but uh, people on Science Madness said it. So yeah, and by the looks of it, they're damn correct. Now we do have to treat this mixture with a lot of care because all these side products could be creating some really nasty molecules, um, such as beta carbolines, which um, is formed due to ring closure. And while some beta carbolines are not toxic at all, some are actually neuroprotective, other ones can be potent neurotoxins. So yeah, we're gonna have to be very safe with this solution and treat it as it does contain it. And I let this react for about 10 minutes and I used the pipette to pull off the organic layer, AKA the acetophenone layer. And I transferred this into a beaker for later distillation to recover my acetophenone because it is fairly expensive. So now we're just left with our aqueous layer and this should contain our serotonin hydrochloride. So then I went ahead and placed the flask onto a hot plate and then also connected a gas adapter. This is to help prevent air getting in and oxidizing crap. And then I boiled down the solution into a really highly concentrated solution. So I turned off the heating and let everything cool down. It's now a concentrated solution. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a wash after this with a non-polar solvent. That's to remove any gunk because the serotonin hydrochloride shouldn't be soluble in really any non-polar solvents. Okay, so now I'm gonna give it a wash with some toluene. As you can see, it did pick up a little bit of stuff, um, but yeah, it doesn't look like it picked up that much. And then I went ahead and moved this into the fridge. The idea behind this is, is hopefully once we concentrate it and place it into the fridge, we can get our serotonin hydrochloride to crystallize out of the solution. Now, five hours later, um, nothing has really crystallized. There was some very small white crystals forming a little bit, but any further cooling failed to increase the size of these crystals or the amount of them. So instead, we're gonna have to sadly switch to an acid base extraction. This is going to drop our yields unbelievably low. We already destroyed a lot of our serotonin with the Oculus HCL. Now we're going to lose even more of it. So I went ahead and transferred the contents of the flask into this beaker. So here on the hot plate, I have a solution of sodium bicarbonate and a solution of sodium carbonate. We wanna use these two to bring this pH to around 10. It has to be 10, you can't use sodium hydroxide because if we deprotonate that phenolic group, um, it'll then become water soluble again. So we don't want that. So we're gonna aim for around a pH of between nine and 10. Okay, so let's begin. We will start off with our sodium bicarbonate. This should bring the pH into the nine range. You can see there definitely is still some HCl in there.
I finally neutralized the solution and I gave it a pH test, which read pretty much neutral pH. There's a lot of stuff starting to precipitate already at neutral pH. Um, this isn't our serotonin, this is something else. So I don't know what it is, but I went ahead and attempted a vacuum filtration on this solution. Okay, and then to our filtrate solution, which theoretically still contains our serotonin, I went ahead and upped the pH to around nine, 10 ish range, and a lot more stuff started to precipitate. And this is where we would expect serotonin to precipitate from the solution. Because when we freebase it, it's no longer going to become soluble and should drop out. Now, serotonin is slightly soluble in water. The exact solubility is yeah, I've looked everywhere on the internet and every different place, even reputable sources have different values, but serotonin is definitely slightly soluble in water. So again, this is why the acid base extraction is not 100% efficient. Now you can see all this stuff precipitating. So I went ahead and added some toluene to the solution and gave it a good shake and stir. Also added a little bit of heat to hopefully get everything pushed into the organic layer that is now free based. And then after a while, I went ahead and decanted off the toluene layer and then boiled down this toluene solution. I am a moron. I dried it last night and it was perfectly white. Um, then I let it sit overnight and most of the serotonin oxidized to goop. <laughs> there is still some left, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a, another purification, isolate it as the HCl salt, which is more stable. Um, serotonin's not the most stable as the free base, so <sighs> yeah. Um, let's go ahead and dissolve this back into some toluene. And then I went ahead and moved the toluene into a test tube. I then went ahead and set up an HCl generator. This is very simple, it just drips concentrated sulfuric acid onto a bit of sodium chloride. This will then produce HCl, which will then fall through this tubing into this little bubbler tube, into the test tube, and this will hopefully precipitate any serotonin in the solution as the hydrochloride salt. So I went ahead and let it rip and prayed for the best. Now it did take a little bit for the HCl to start going. I did add a little bit of pH paper over the top to tell when HCl was starting to come out. And hey, something did precipitate. It's dark brown, but something did precipitate as the HCl salt. So that's good news. Now this is a brownish, gunkish looking material and that's because some of the serotonin did get oxidized. So it's also precipitating other oxidized serotonin salts with it. Um, but for the most part, this should be serotonin hydrochloride. I then tried my best to collect all this brown gunk out of the test tube and placed it on top of this beaker to sit out and dry. And bam, there you go, serotonin hydrochloride. But I do have to do one more final thing just to help prove that this is serotonin hydrochloride and that is a melting point test. So now this is gonna be the most scientific melting point test you've ever seen. I took my thermal couple, put a little bit of the serotonin hydrochloride on the tip and then set it over the hot plate and look to see what temperature it melts at. Yeah, that's simple. Um, this isn't going to be the most accurate though, because it's not even temperature heating and there's a lot of things of why it's not the most accurate. But uh, yeah, it should give us a good range to see where it's melting at and that will help us determine if it is serotonin. Okay, and there you go. You can see that it melts in the 160C to the 170C range, which is pretty much dead accurate. Literature values put it at about 167.7. So yeah, this is definitely relatively pure serotonin hydrochloride. I just really wish it wasn't freaking brown. Like it, it would look so much better if it was not brown. So much better. And for some future videos, I'm probably gonna do a whole series of different neurotransmitters. I wanna do histamine, that would be pretty cool. Um, dopamine would be another cool one. Uh, adrenaline would be another cool one. And yeah, leave a comment below of other neurotransmitters you think I should make. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon because I am what's known as poor and uh, well, more lab equipment makes things more easy. More lab equipment means cooler things I can make for you guys. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.